Good evening everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Up The Dial and um, we're going to do something a little bit different from the first three episodes. The next two episodes will be a look back at the uh, 2015 first 11 season where the team won the league uh, Division 3 of the Palace Shield. Now to some that doesn't seem an awful lot um, but at Walkerdale it was one of the key moments of, of our recent history. Uh, the club only joined the Palace Shield in 2006 um, and it was a, a, a real climax to a period where we'd had a, a real good group of players and it culminated in what turned out to be a, a record season, a record breaking season in a lot of different ways. Uh, joining me tonight as usual is um, our Vice Chairman and my colleague in the second team Dave McGuire. Good evening Dave. Evening Neil. And uh, the gentleman over to our, our left uh, on the bottom is Scott Newton, current or what would have been this year, current uh, first 11 captain. Uh, in 2015, Scott was and still is our wicketkeeper, and Scott won the wicketkeeper's award that year with a total of 21 victims, 17 catches, and four stumpings, which he told me before we started he thought was more than that. So I'm not sure how this is going to go, Scott, if your memory can't even remember how many catches and stumpings you got. But good evening, pal. Good evening, Matt. I thought. And uh, the gentleman top left. It might be top right, I, can't, I don't know how this is going to film, but um, is, is Alex Hines. Alex um, is a long-standing member of Walton Dale. How long have you been at the club, Al? I, I, reckon it's, I reckon it's 20 years. I, th I, think, I think I started in 98, so it's, it's about 22 years, I think. Probably longer than um, yeah. all, of us, all of us, really. So it's, uh, Al's been at the club a long time. Um, had a little break at Horton, but we'll not hold that against him. Um, that year in 2015 was a special year for Alex. He broke the league record with 925 runs. That's just in Division 3. He did score a lot more in the, the Cup competitions and the T20 competitions. Uh, at an average of 66.07 with a high score of 111 not out. The amazing thing, which I've only just found out today, was your strike rate that year, Al, was 119.23. So it was a, they were scored at a decent oh, wow. level. Um, there was four fifties, which I thought was more until I looked at it, and three hundred. So it was um, it was a reasonable year for you, let's say. Yeah, well, you, you're really feeding me ego there, Neil. Uh, Bear in mind, I, 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 I got three ducks last year in the four games I played, so <laughs> I'll, I'll take that off you. Cheers. That's why we remember the good well, way of out. cricket, isn't it? That's <laughs> it. That's it. So, um, so we're going to look back. The, the purpose of, of this episode will be to look back at the first half of the season. Um, which starts with Freckleton. Um, does somebody want to remind me where it ends halfway through the season? No? Um, it's F and B. F and B. So, of course F &B it is. F and B at home. F and yeah. B at home. So, we, we said we'd treat this uh, very much like a, an old friends get together. I know a lot of the, the, the three episodes we've done have been quite structured uh, in their content, but we really wanted to look, have it, take a look back at the 2015 season. And hopefully, watching this, you'll see why, because there was really something happened uh, on every game and, and a lot of good memories to share. So, so we're going to dive straight into it. And the first match that year was against, unfortunately, a team that now no longer exists or exists in, in very few people um, looking after it. A club called Freckleton over near Blackpool. And, uh, and we got off to a winning start. Um, I'm going to start with you, Hines. What's your memories yeah. of that game? Um, well, I think Freckleton in in well the second team that we played that day. They've been in Division Three for quite a few years. So we, we by the time we played them in 2015, um, we knew what to expect. Really, obviously, there were quite a few um, guys who've been around the club for a long time. Obviously, Frank Holden and um, and, and Rigby we'd face quite often. Um, and we knew they were, they were difficult to beat, so we wanted to obviously get off to a winning start. Um, I, I, got, I got some runs, which is always nice as a batsman, the, the, the first game of the season. Um, I, I don't remember how I scored those runs, by the way, but I, I, I do remember getting out. I do remember out getting out to a leg spinner, caught and ball, just, just hitting it back at him. A um, bit of a lazy shot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I give it away, unfortunately. But um, let me just have a look at the um, what we got. One hundred and seventy-nine, one 
179 for yeah, eight. Yeah, you ended up with just the 77 Hines, so not a bad start to the season. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take it. As I say, as a batsman, it's always nice to get started, and, and 77 is nice, yeah. especially at, especially at Walley Dale in April. I was going to say, <laughs> Walley Dale track, week one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 77 but, for a team is pretty good. Yeah, but ga game wise, obviously the the guy I mentioned, Frank, he got he got fifty six, so he's he's straight in with the runs as well. And um, every time we played him, he scored runs. He he, he just always did. He, he seemed to love playing against us. Yeah, he, he just he, he was a bit he was a bit like the Steve Ward Palace Shield. I thought in our in our league, he just just <laughs> to grind out innings, you know. Well, I think you know we we all know we've had discussions about this many times over the yeah. years, but Frank. Frank at the time um, was a, a real tough competitor, you know, gave no quarter, accepted no quarter. And I think, you know, from our point yeah. of view, say again, Scott. Yeah, it's an uh, that was, that, I think that was in the second match, the away match. Yeah, he, <laughs> I, 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 in this one, I think he got a little bit upset with some of the umpiring, some of the home umpiring. Don't know why that would be with Bungle umpiring. Yeah, Bungle. Yeah. So. Bungle. Yeah. It, but I think it set the tone that, and I think again we'll, we'll find out as we go through this that we ended up being really good mates with Frank, you know, towards the end of the season, and, and we used to interact with him quite a lot. And I think it just went to show that a lot of it was play hard but play fair in the end. And you know, I think ultimately we will meet a lot of characters as we go through this review and. And Frank was certainly one of them. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is is a pattern that then disappeared after this game, which was, um, as we've discussed before, we had a, a very separate group of players within that team in terms of we had a very distinct group of batsmen and a very distinct group of bowlers. And we, we weren't a team of all-rounders as, as such. And um, generally speaking, in this game, we batted right down to eleven. Uh, after your 77, not many of the top order really got much, Alex. And uh, But then we had Mac Morris, 17, Naz with 14, Sam Bolton, 16, Scott, yourself, 18, not out there, and including a six. Now, yeah, please but... tell me you remember that, because I certainly yeah. can't. Straight back down, round, I think it were. <laughs> I, I, are you really telling the truth there, Scott? I don't think that happened, Scott. The game got delayed for about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, me and you. So you you eighteen not out, me thirteen not out, and and yeah, I, I just think as, as my memory might be proven wrong looking through the game, but I don't think that was a habit that we did an awful lot in terms of batting all the way down. The top order used to fire, and then I yeah. can remember the typical Dale collapse just used to follow. And um, when we did get big scores, it was generally that, because that the top collapse, order fire. That collapse was carried. That collapse was carried though each game because oh of yeah the absolutely you know what I mean? the top had always got some runs at that stage generally speaking yeah, yeah. I, I think i think we know don't we i mean obviously from playing at Walter Dale for, for years but what one 150 generally um down at Walter Dale, you've got a good chance of um of winning yeah. the game obviously batting first especially just because of the size of the outfield really yeah. and the and then the pitch so the minute we got towards 180 um I think I think we fancied it, and, and obviously I remember he was he was getting towards um, being an interesting game when Frank was in. But once we got him, um, yeah. we 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 were uh, we were pretty confident we were going to win. I, I think I think the last couple of years when we played them, they beat us, hadn't they? They had the wool over us a few times, and Frank had scored a lot of them runs. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, I mean, they, looking at the, some of the players, they really did have a good team: Kev Whitsey, Frank Holden, uh, Jonathan Gooding. Obviously, Riggers, as you said, Mark Rigby, uh, and like you, you know, Gary Fiddler as keeper, ex first team keeper, young Henry Fiddler, who, who went on to be a very good leg spinner. Um, mm. They had a good, you know, there's no 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 denying they had a really good side. So um, so in their replies, you said Frank Alden 65, and then really there was not an awful lot else other than a little flurry down at the bottom. Ian Snape, their captain, 23, and Henry Fiddler 14, and they got up to. 156, so it's, it's a little bit closer than probably it felt at the time. But um, Scott, Scott Newton's 18's won the game for us, then in that he, case, when you look done, at it, he's again. done a good job, that's for certain. <laughs> um, One thing I noticed, Neil, was, um, One thing I noticed, Neil, was uh, two wickets for uh, a certain James Ainscoe, right at, at an important time in the game. Um, you know, top order batsman, part time keeper, part time bowler. 
Well, I think, again, as we go on through this, and I think it was also in the return match at Freck away, which we'll discuss in the in the second part, Ainey had a knack of breaking partnerships with the most filthy leg spin you'd ever seen in your life. Yeah. And, I mean... True. <laughs> Ainey, Ainey, obviously, cricket-wise, is an outrageous talent, but he, he, like you say, he's balling his film. It is. And <clears throat> how he's getting them wickets, we'll never know. I mean, uh, some of our memories will be crystal clear. I've got to say, my memories of Ainey's wickets that day, the Mark Rigby bowled one, I'm absolutely certain that will have probably been nearly on the second bounce that he bowled in. Absolutely guaranteed. It would have, it would have pushed it halfway down, it would have stuck in deck, and he'd have played over top of it, something like that. Absolutely yeah, guaranteed. And no matter what, you know, with Ainey, he's going to celebrate like he's Shane Warner. He's just, <laughs> he's just bowled the, the ball of the uh, century. Oh, yeah. him. As a no fellow what, member of the uh, Leg Spin Union, I feel like I have to defend him here, and I'm sure <laughs> it was unplayable. <laughs> 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 well, the, the, the standout bowler that day was JT. He opened up and bowled a, a mammoth fifth bar. I don't know if it was a, not a 15 over spell. Bowled 15 overs and got five for 33. So uh, it was a it was a good performance by JT, and he got off, he got us off to a winning start. So always yep. nice when you when you can get off to a winning start. Now we'll move on to the second game, which Mr. Hines will remember fondly. We we, we travelled to our near neighbours, New Longton. Um, who, again, another club we've always, let's say, had competitive games against before. They, there's generally a little bit of a crowd on at New Longton with the with the club being there and open and all, all day. And I know Mr Dawson, a uh, left-arm quick bowler from Walterdale, for those of you that don't know him, has often had a little bit of banter with the uh, the guys at, at New Longton. Um, Daw Dawson wasn't playing this game, thankfully. Um but we batted first and we put on a grand total of 233. Largely partly down to um, Mr Hines' 106. 16. Did I get another six? Did, no. Um, <laughs> oh, you weren't playing that day, Scott, <laughs> amazingly enough. So, so no, you don't, you'd struggle. Um, Hines' 106, 16 fours, three sixes. Uh, ably assisted by James Ainsco, 48. Um and, and we, we know New Longton's a small ground, Hines, but I've got to say, New Longton are no mugs with ball either. So, I mean, first 100 at year in second game, you must have been over at moon with that, pal. Yeah, I mean, what, what a start there with, with a 70 and then a, a ton in the second game. And, and obviously, at New Longton, it's, it's, once you get in, um, pitch-wise, it's good. But once you get in, the, the outfield's so small, you know, so once you, uh, you feel comfortable, you can score quickly. Um, and 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 it was a nice a nice knock, so I was pretty happy with it. Um, score wise, it, I think it's something you mentioned about patterns before, but really, one of the the, the things about that game, we, we should have scored a lot more. Really, I think I think you, you'll see it as we go on through the season. But there was there was some some T Twenty style starts, um, followed by a, a, a rapid decline. Oh, no. But, but in the end, we, we had enough and, and, and obviously I think halfway through we're looking towards 300 and trying to um, get a, get an even bigger score. But let's say, I guess you can't be too greedy. Um, a, a win's a win and, and I'll, I'll certainly take the 100. But um, yeah, de definitely assisted by the small boundaries. And, 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 and bowling-wise, I, do, I don't remember too, I, I don't remember who, who they had, but I, I'm not sure if there was a couple of sixes. There must have been. Yeah, the... the... In terms of what their their ball was going for big big runs, I no, I, I, I feel I, I remember I remember a short ball. I remember pulling it pulling at least one six, but I, 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 I don't know if you got a strikeway or anything. The, he unfortunately, hasn't got the the number of balls, but I can remember the the um, old people's sheltered housing getting peppered a little bit. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And, 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 that is, that is yeah. Problem, isn't it? The other, well, the other no, one no, is, is the kids' playground. Nothing's though. nothing's there for Neil Longton, is it? The no, cars, the old kids, ladies, and, kids' playground. They're all on in one trouble. Side and um, and sheltered housing on the other. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> an ideal combination. Um, but yeah, only forty-eight, and again, must have been quick fire because there's six fours and yeah. two sixes. And then, Dave, you might. This is someone obviously that would have probably played with you more in the seconds, but. Uh, filling in that day, we had Ben Petrez who got 33, um, and Ben I think was batting with you, Hines, when you got your hundred. I can remember the photos. He, he, he was Ben was um, he, he was an absolute legend. I mean, 
but back when I used to score for the first team, he was the first team opener, and he had a, a time away from the game and came back. Just a brilliant, brilliant clubman, brilliant, brilliant technique. Scored a lot of runs for the seconds, and we always felt he was good enough for the first. Yeah. Te technique wise and ability wise, he definitely should have been in that first team. Um, but it just didn't work out for him for whatever reason. I don't know if he didn't. I don't uh, think he believed he was. I don't think. You know, he I, I don't know whether it was belief or he didn't enjoy it as much, or he just he just preferred it in the seconds, more chance of game time or whatever. But that that particular innings, it was brilliant. It really really helped me through it because he he complimented. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he he was he was very he was fast between the wickets and obviously being a lefty. Um, and, and yeah, I remember batting with him and I remember him, him congratulating me, so it was nice. But yeah, it's a shame he's left actually, Ben. He was a really good good clubman, good batsman, and, um, and hopefully he'll be back at some point. Yeah, but I do, I do remember batting with, with, um, with Ben. Yeah, you'll obviously have a, a good knowledge of Ben um, from your time in the seconds with him. And he, and he really was, certainly in the second team, a, a real run machine, wasn't he? Yeah, he was an absolute mainstay of the second team for quite a few years, and obviously sheer weight of runs got him into the first team on occasions obviously as games like this you know it, it was very strong um straight to the wicket and also with these cuts and pulls and, and shot square of the wicket um certainly in, in the second team you know you always felt if he was in in the middle and you know had, had made a start you always felt comfortable and you know sort of expecting a, a good total on the board he just gave the rest of the team that, that air of confidence yeah. And just generally, he was just a really good guy to have yeah, around. He, he was, well, you know, he just had a really positive attitude, and would, you know, keep everyone's spirits up with like you know some some funny one liner or something. You just, you, you, just, you, you know, any sport needs people like that who just you know keep people going. Without the new signings, he would have definitely been in the first team as you know as as um, as, a, as a top five batter. Um, but just mm -hmm. just to set the scene, obviously. We don't really give a, a bit of a review or a, a, a kind of start up to the season, but we, we obviously signed Kurt and Ernie at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And you mentioned Ernie there getting, um, what was it, 40, 48? 48, so. yeah. But obviously, yeah. Ernie came from, from Horton um, in Division yeah. 1, I think they were at the time. And then Kurt came from Garstang, obviously playing Premier League cricket. So these were two really kind of gun, you know, quality batsmen who came straight in. Um, and, and, and Ernie especially hit the ground running and then Kurt, Kurt got going kind of in the second half of the season, which obviously you'll see next week. Yeah. But um, but without those two, he definitely would have been in, you know, without down, probably would have had a really good year. But it was just it was just a really strong batting lineup because because of obviously the new signings and um, and, and it, it just didn't work out for him. He's a triathlete now, I think, isn't he? Yeah, he does do Ironman now. He's yeah. yeah. a yeah. yeah. Yeah, but again, probably suit probably suits him because he was he was always as as he said he was always fit, always quick between wickets. So yeah, but it would be it would be nice if Ben came back. Well, the other thing that Ainsy uh, touched on and Scott touched on was um, the collapse. So Ben Ben was in at five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and got thirty three. Uh, from six down, nobody got above three. So, Sam, <laughs> Sam one, Neil Harvey three. In the score of 230. <laughs> JT, JT one, Matty Easton three, Shaw's three not out, and Imran Paladiwala zero. So, yeah, typical Dale collapse, and as Ainsy said, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, have gone on we, to get we didn't have an engine room, did we, one with Dale? No. We had the panic room. Exactly, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't agree more with that. So, so it was it was 233 all out in 42 overs. Absolute bedlam bat in that. Absolute bedlam. New Longton finished on 134 all out, and I think my memory serves me right. It was it was quite easy if I if I remember. I don't think we at any point, you know, they didn't really get off to a great start. In fact, JT I think whipped one out early, um, and and there was actually if anything a little bit of a, a wagging of the tail. Uh, Robert Dickinson 28 not out at 10, and Steve Yardley who I know quite well. Um, 13 at 11 um, and so you know that that probably got them you know two big wee extras probably about half their runs were in that that last wicket partnership so bowling wise JT with another four so that's JT with 10 already in first two games and then rest of wicket shared around two for Curtis two for Imran uh, who played I think he was at his one and only game for the first that year uh, and two for myself and yeah so it was yeah. um, 
a fairly convincing performance. Well, what, what, what a start for JT there then, because I, I didn't realise that. So he, he's had a five for an, a, an, and four wickets in the first two yeah, games. So he, absolutely. He, he, he's had a fantastic start. And, and, and obviously, he, he um, I mentioned before, Ernie and Kurt, they signed at the start of the year, but JT hadn't been long back at the club. I mean, he, he played in the, in the juniors with me, you know, in, in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, but he'd obviously gone to Garstang and come back. And, um, and and I think he came the season before in 2014. Yeah. What, what a start for JT there, nine wickets in two games. Well, I think the big thing about <laughs> JT, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to ask Scott about this one because obviously it probably benefited Scott a little bit. But it was always, looking back now, at the time I didn't really spot it, but looking back it was not a brave decision, but it was a canny decision by Kez, the captain, to open up with JT and a and other is generally Curtis. Um, Curtis with his pace, but JT was at that season and for the, for the couple of seasons around then was extraordinarily accurate with his away swing and, and always swung the ball. It was always from the hand. It was noticeable swing. It's not as if JT ever swung it late, but it was always a really good idea to start with JT's accuracy and Kurt's pace. And I think. Scott, for you, you, would you stand up to JT from time to time? Well, I, I always stood up to JT. There'd be no, no point in him bowling if I didn't. Um, yeah. I think with him opening and uh, Curtis or Jake, it gave us a, a good balance. Like you say, with somebody coming who can bowl fast and then obviously JT coming in, swinging it, hitting the surface, it was, uh, it was a good, good mix and balance for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as I say, so that's that's got us off to a great start. Two from two, two different performances, but two fairly convincing performances. Match three, whilst short, will be very very memorable. Um, we'd always touching on teams we'd always had a bit of competition with. Leyland thirds was one. Um, we'd struggled to beat them on a number of occasions for the previous two seasons, and. Um, they turned up to Wantledale that day, a little bit overcast, a little bit miserable. And, and I knew a lot of the Leyland players and I was amazed at the team that they turned out. And it looked weak, to say the least, full of juniors with a couple of old timers in it. Uh, one decent bowler, Chris Kelly, who we'd known and we knew he was a good bowler. So um, Leyland won the toss. As I say, it was an overcast, miserable day and decided to put us in. Um, now, do you want to talk us through you and Kez opening irons and talk us through what happened next? Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I remember it well, despite probably being, well, probably suffering from concussion at the time. Um, but obviously, you know, the, the first, so I'm, I'm 170 runs for the season already, two games in. So obviously third game, um, well, I, I'm looking to attack from the off. And uh, I'm not sure if it was the first or second over, but it, you mentioned it was an overcast day. It was, and, and the pitch, I'm not sure we had the the, um, the, the the covers then. I think we just had the tarpaulin sheet. So it was a little bit, it was a little bit um, moist underneath the um, the cover, shall we say. And um, I think I got off the mark with a four, but then unfortunately I just misjudged a short ball. And I was actually, and it was from, um, what, what's the ball's name again, Neil? Chris Chris Kelly, that's it. Yeah, unfortunately, he, he was he was quite quite quick at that level, and um, I, I rocked, rocked back to um, to pull him over to the the playground down at the wreck, and um, unfortunately, I was I was through my shot, and it went perfectly through the um, the, the, the the my lid, um, and the grill on my helmet, and uh, unfortunately, it took me right in the uh, above, above the eye there, so. Um, I, I, straight away, I, I can tell that there's blood running down my face, and um, I think worryingly, Sammy B was our um, first aider at the time. <laughs> so he he, he he rushed on and, um, and 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 patched me up. And I just remember Jake Bolton looking at me. Um, you know, I, I, he looked absolutely scared to death. So obviously, I can't see myself. So I, I'm thinking it's quite bad. Anyway, luckily enough, Scott Newton wasn't playing that day, so he said he'd take me up to um, Chorley A and E, and that was me. So I'd, I'd like to say that I, I got got bandaged up and uh, went straight back out there, but I, it, it, that that wasn't for me. I, I was off to get it glued up, and 
I, th I think that I was enough for me. Were you asked for your 12 quid? You know what? I, I think, I think obviously, I, I didn't go back to the ground that day um, because the game was rained off. But I'm sure, knowing um, knowing the, the lads around the club, that I'll have had a text at some point, probably <laughs> while I was in A and E, saying, um, you know, when are you paying your twelve quid? But yeah, look, looking up, um, Scotty took me up to to A and E, and my, my major memory from that day is just being sat in the waiting room at the hospital, looking at WhatsApp. And that the game had been rain. Um, it was off for rain at the time, but the, I think we, we were 146 for one off off nine, 19 overs. And I thought that that is that can't be right. There's got to be a mistake there. But obviously, which is getting towards about eight and over at that stage. Yeah. So obviously, Amy and uh, and Kurt, who have probably been pretty frustrated watching me score runs in the first two games. They're glad to see the back of me. I'm at the hospital and they're cashing in. Yeah, it was it was a um, it was a bit of an adventure. I've got to say, at the time, as I said, because we'd struggled against Leyland previously, I think we all came away from that so frustrated. Uh, and, and with greatest respect to you, Irons, I think we've forgotten about you at this point because, like you said, we were oh yeah, I, that was a distant memory. 143 for one off 19 overs. We've got Amy on an 87, and we have, unfortunately haven't got how many balls, but. It can't have been much more than 40 odd. Uh, 11 fours, two sixes, and Curtis was 28. Mm. And we were strolling it, absolutely yeah. strolling it. That, 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 Any, I mean, obviously, Kurt is a, is a real quality batsman, technically. But Ernie, when he gets going with his with his hand eye coordination, he just goes in from the off and, and yeah. puts bat and ball. And it was just one of those days where he was, he was on it. And um, he's so unlucky not to get his tongue, um, you know, and, and rain to come. And obviously, you know, it gets mentioned quite often to him because um, he still hasn't scored an hundred yet. So it was just a bit unfortunate for him. I, 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 he, he brings that up on a regular basis. But yeah, we, we were seething that day and it was, um, yeah, wasn't wasn't ideal. But luckily, Mr. Hines came back. I was just liking that one, one isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well. So, uh, so yeah, so so that was, that was Leyland at home, rained off, no result. We then um, we then played another game that had an awful lot on it, which was Chan at Richard away. Now, my memory of this was them trying to call it off first thing in the morning. I think a lot of games got called off that day, and um, and we we were let's say apprehensive about their decision to try and call it off. And I think either JT or a couple of lads actually went up to the ground. Um, I don't know if any of you two were amongst those, but I think a couple of lads, or at least JT, might have gone up to the ground to actually well, see what the state of the ground was. I think, I think the first thing with that with that game is obviously Kez and, um, and Sammy B, so Captain and Vice aren't there, are they? No, that week. The, um, so, so, so I think JT was skip. So yeah, it, sound, it sounds certainly like something John would do is get down early and, and see if we can get the game on. Um, so that's that's probably what, what happened. Yeah, but my, my recollection of that day is is um, that it was it, 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 the, the game was all right weather-wise, but in the morning um, there'd been a lot of rain, and and obviously you can you can see that um, in the scores the pitch was was pretty wet when we got out to play. We uh, we got there and, and they had been doing some work, but I think again the frustration overflowed a little bit for us in such that we got there and literally no work was being done on the ground and the water hog was left abandoned on its side on the outfield and. Uh, I think we were there probably about half an hour before they were. Um, now, this match will be remembered for a couple of different things. One of them not controversial was that Mr. Shorak, who was keeping that day, uh, instead of Scott, um, went about wearing a GoPro. And that GoPro <laughs> is evidence is on our YouTube channel if you want to look back and find it. Um, but the, we, we stuck them in and, and the pitch was horrendous. Uh, sorry, they stuck themselves in. The pitch was a horrendous. It was, it was really tacky and, and sawdust everywhere. Um, but we did quite well. Their, their captain, uh, sorry, not their captain. He's captain of Chorley now. Mark Richardson, their opening back, got forty-one, um, and, and really was held their their innings together. And they crept to hundred and thirteen all out. At which point, 
I can't remember our thoughts at this point. Scott, do you, can you? Oh, you were there, sorry. I, Alex, can you remember? Yeah, what you thought? yeah because we're four games in. <laughs> I haven't been in. I, haven't been in <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think that weekend was uh, Sorrento. If you guys didn't cover it, it was Sorrento, weren't we? Um, I, I don't. I don't think he's earned his medal really for this season. No, I think no, no. <laughs> Part timer. Yeah. Oh. Well, how many? Well, yeah. We'll move on. But um, yeah, I, I think. I think my my recollection of that game is 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 we fancied it. Um, we wanted to play, obviously, because we we won the first two and we 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 were on the way to put Paulson a good score against Leyland. So obviously, fourth game in. Bearing in mind, we've been in this league now for five years, and we we really wanted to get out of the league, and and, and we felt we had the team to do it that year. Um, so we really wanted to play, and um, uh, John Richard again is is a, is a, is a pick, it's a big outfield. So, you know, I remember thinking that it won't be an easy chase, particularly the, the pitch. I think that was another pitch that was uncovered. So by, by the time we got out to bat in the second innings, it, 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 it resembled something that you see at the end of Glastonbury. It was just, it was just mud from what I remember. And, um, and obviously, batting-wise, um, I, I was really pleased with that innings because I think when, when in, in maybe the first two games of the season, you just you, you get going and, and you, you start putting back to ball and you, you don't really think about it. You're just trying to hit the ball as hard as you can. But that day, it was a real battle to try and get any runs, you know, and um, there was a lot of twos that day. And, and I remember Mick Brown, Mad Mick Brown, played for China Richard at the time. And when I was a junior, um, he, he played for Walter Dale. He was a bit of a Walter Dale legend. He won the league with us in 2004. So that was nice to face. Um, Mick Brown, albeit with a, a bandage around the head at the time, because he still hadn't healed from the week before. Uh, you, you got 49, and as you said, it was a very hard fought 49. Um, and it, it was, but unfortunately, it was the only knock of note in that we got skittled for 94, and, and uh, a, a guy called uh, Mark Easton got seven for 20. Uh, which I think was just about the best bowling figures in the division that the, year. The, the perfect bowler for that wicket. He was yeah. he was their version of J, uh, JT, just yeah. um, kind of medium pace away swing, just really difficult to face. I think he got me out as well. Um, yeah, just just yeah on on that particular wicket, just too too good for us, unfortunately. The, the one the one incident of no, as I say, I think we were we weren't in the best frame of mind generally anyway because of how we felt they hadn't tried to get the game on. So then when we've played the game and we've come away losing a match that whether we thought we shouldn't have lost it or not is by the by. The final wicket was a little bit contentious. Um, Jake Bolton, who is, let's say, not the calmest of individuals, uh, was batting and had played and missed at one and had looked behind him to check if the keeper had the ball in his gloves, which he had. And then proceeded to go and do a little bit gardening down the wicket. At which point their keeper then throws the stumps down from about 10 yards back, having Jake stumped. And uh, to say all hell broke loose would be a gross understatement. Um, I Jake think and their... clap on a Richard, isn't it, to be honest? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think to say that both sets were competitive, Scott. Yeah, might be the way, best way, di diplomatic way of putting it. But I, I call it a classic shit out trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Um, but yeah, so so both Jake and their keeper, I think, had to be held back from one another as they entered the changing rooms, and uh, and yeah, we just had to chalk that one up, really. Um, so a loss in the fourth game, and we we'd won two. One, one abandoned and one loss at that point. We then played a cup game against Garstang, which we're not going to cover, but we got absolutely smashed. But I do remember that we had a basically a, sec a second string team out for that. Now, the next game was against Whittingham. Whitt Whittingham and Goosner at home. Now, as we know, Whittingham were one of those teams that could either come out all guns blazing and blow you away, uh, which they did to a lot of teams that year. And, and just before we go into the game, Alex, you said something the other day. Um, in one of the, the first games of the season, you believe Whittingham racked up 400 against somebody. Yeah, they, they, they did. They scored 400, which is just un unbelievable, especially our standard. The, the, the quality of, of batting there to get 400 is just... It, it, 
it's fantastic. So I, I guess at that stage, we're looking at Whittingham and Goose now. If we put ourselves in the mindset of us there in 2015, we're probably looking at them and thinking they're, um, the, the, the title potential title challenges. And obviously a bit like Freckleton second team, Whittingham and Goosen second team, we, we played against them for a number of years in that Division 3 and um, really got to know them well. And, and it kind of been 50-50, you know, we, we won a few games and they won a few games and, and it was always a really good match against them. So, um, and again, it was here, wasn't it? It was quite tight yeah. in, in, in the game. I think, uh, on, the runs, the amount of runs, were I back in for this one? You were back in for this one, Paul. I was back in for this one. We didn't put a lot on the board, did we? 129 all out in 37 overs yeah, after choosing yeah. to bat. Like you said, with Whittingham, it's shit of us, isn't it? So, yeah. obviously, the ball and attack that day, I think skittled them for 80, 80 odd. And I think looking back on it, if they'd have fired, we've got away with that one. Well, again, you look at our batting performance batting first and Kez opening up 33 um, and then middle order, Mac Morris 27, of which five of those were, were fours. Um, those two together have probably pretty much won us that game in a, a very low scoring affair. Um, and as I, you think say, was, I think that this year was the year that Mac, I think, firstly, like come of age. I mean, he got a few 50s under his belt and he started falling a lot tighter and Obviously, he's progressed into what, what he needs to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was a breakthrough season for Mac. Yeah. Um, and I think looking looking at looking at that um, that Whittingham side that day, there were some damn good bowlers in that side. And Maniba Alam got five for for him. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I think at probably halfway stage, as Alex said, we we considered Whittingham a real challenger for the league. And to be all out one twenty nine on. On a, all right, on a Dale deck, which sometimes 150 is a decent total, I think we probably felt that was 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 subpar at that point. Um, but as we've said previously, if the batters didn't bat, the ball was bold, and uh, and we skittled them all out for 82, um, which is is great in anybody's books. And they they only had two lads make double figures, both of which got 26, and, and the rest didn't score above seven. So it was. Um, it was a real good comeback from from the the bowlers on that one. Um, and also, Curtis, uh, Neil, it was the first sighting of the mop this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that because actually that's something I don't know if anybody's actually noticed what that match was, but it was my um, I can't remember the second season or the third season on the trot, but the last three wickets were all by Neil Harvey, and that was a hat trick. Um, and I think it was the that was my third year on the trot that I got a hat trick in the season, and um, yeah, just the little figures of two, uh, three for three for two off two overs, and uh, as Dave said, I was quickly getting the uh, the nickname of changing from slug to the mop at that point. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it was um, it, it was a, a, a real good uh, a real good uh, performance by us to to come back and, and get them all out for eighty two. So so yeah, real good real good win. I, th I think with that though, Neil. I mean, the, the, all, all season, and again, we'll see as we go on. But there was a lot of high-profile um, bowlers in, in the team as well. Obviously, a lot of pace with Jake and, and Kurt, and, 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 and JT was a quality player who came from a higher standard. And um, and in the end, you when we got towards the end of the, the season, you were challenging for the averages, and um, you did just seem to have this knack. Um, to get to get the tail tail enders out, I don't, I don't know what it was. You just you just it was mainly Yorkers. You seem to, to, to be able to get them with Yorkers. So yeah, I think that's the first example of uh, of a pattern that we'll we'll see Yorker throughout the season. Trick, it? What the inswinging Yorker? It was. It was. Uh, it, mocked, uh, it mocked up many a tail that. Well, it does, and and, and and Dave will will now probably attest to the fact that I don't do that in the second team anymore. It's probably for the better of the I, second team. Now. I don't think that's that's what I was going to say. Why, why, yeah, why you don't ball for the second? I think I the problem the, the is that's never expected. It, really. it can only manage four balls, and then he's blowing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that that is a large part off. of it. To be fair, yeah, that is a large part of it. It, get, it gets worrying when your kids are actually outperforming you, Scott. So that's a, that's a large part of it. But yeah, it was it was a. It's always good to get a hat trick. Don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, it was it was it, it was one of the weaker ones in terms of the last three batsmen. But 
Anyway, listen, 129 all out to bowl them out for 82. Again, battling performance that, and slightly different to some of the performances during the rest of the season. So we go from a battling victory, and then we move on to the next match, which again was at home. So we had two home matches on the trot, and we faced the team that eventually would finish second to us, Thornton Cleveley's second team. And uh, again, Cleveley's at that time, I think we're going through a little bit of a transition period. And they seem to have a lot of ex-first teamers, older heads coming down to the second team. And, and we knew it was always going to be a tough battle against them as well. Uh, and it certainly turned out to be the case. Um, the totals were Wantley Dale won the toss and elected to bat. And we were all out for 82 off 28 overs. And uh, Thornton Cleveland's knocked it off for four inside 16 overs. So... On the face of it, an extremely disappointing result, and um, you know we we can hardly hide behind the fact that you know we had players missing. Yes, we did, but not massively so. And uh, I think realistically, you two, I don't know who wants to dip in first on this one, but I think this was probably our lowest ever of the season. I think I think this one was the absolute kick up the arse for the rest of the season. To be quite honest, um, one thing that struck me is that when we went into bat was I think it was Sam Bradshaw. He got three big wickets. I think he got the top three inside first three overs, did he? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like that. That, obviously the batting the strong part of the team was obviously dismantled in that small period. Yeah, well, yeah, he, 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 he was just, I mean, I, I remember that day really well, obviously, because it was such a big disappointment. And, and we knew Thornton were going to challenge us. Um, and, and the weather was fantastic. The pitch was fantastic. I mean, the day was set up for a, a really good, close game. Um, and <laughs> it just didn't work out like that. And um, I remember getting out of ball to, to Sam and um, he, he dug one in short and um, they kind of fended it away. And it was a brilliant catch in the end. Um, but he, he was just for the first few overs. He was just really quite really quick, and um, he just took those those three wickets in the first three overs. And sometimes it's like that quick. It, you know, it, if someone just has a really good spell as, as an opening bowler, um, it really did kind of decimate the top order. And then we were always behind behind the game. Then, and and obviously Kurt did his best to get us up to something respectable. And and you know, as we mentioned it there, we say one fifty, you're in with a good chance. But one twenty, you think. That that's your kind of that that's we can we can potentially uh, defend it despite yeah. the fact it was a, a really good day uh, weather wise and pitch wise, but we were just never in the game once once that had, had happened despite Kurt's efforts, um, the batting just wasn't good enough and and his spell was just fantastic at the start and blew us away. Um, thankfully for for for, for us, um, he, he then quickly went into the first team um, away from the second and, and didn't do much in in all for the rest of the year. I think as well with. We've... In the previous games, in the top order doing the damage, I think the middle to bottom order was yeah. sort of like rabbit in the headlights. It's, 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 it's really hard. It's, it's a good point because, I mean, with, with cricket, with batting, I mean, what, what kind of sport can you have where you, you, you don't do anything for four weeks and then all of a sudden you're expected to, to win the game for your team? And, and that's what it was like, obviously, with um, the, 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 the top order doing the job in the, the first section of the season. All of a sudden we're in trouble and, and, and the middle order guys... And just haven't had the the, the the game time, you know. So um, despite Kurt, Kurt doing, you know, you know, knocking knocking a fifty, Kurt got fifty six. Mm. Yeah, Kurt got fifty six. Kurt got fifty six. Yeah, yeah. Kurt got fifty six. And an in quick time as well, six fours and four sixes, which is incredible hitting, to, to say the least. Classic, uh, classic Kurt, absolutely. But then you look at fifty six out of eighty two, and, and as as, as yeah. Alex says. You know, from from Mac down, who's at five, uh, Jake was top scorer with six. But there's no explanation for that day. I mean, you look at the Charlie Richard game and you mentioned the weather and the pitch and you come out with all these excuses. There was no reason why that happened. Um, I remember dri driving. We were, in, we were in the pub. We were in the U tree for quarter five. I, I do remember shot. one highlight <laughs> from my perspective was the absolute specky that Sam Bolton caught at slip off. Uh, do you remember it, Alex? The one above his head. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to let you down. Scott, he's, 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 got, he's had that many fa fantastic catches in his time. Yeah, uh, lose right. track. Yeah. So Scott's actually thinking of, of the return fixture, which will be in part two. But yeah. Did you have a game? No. No. 
No, that was the return fixture. So. <laughs> Nothing could happen in that game, Scott. To be fair, <laughs> Scott, that was off of me, and I didn't bowl in this game, in this particular <laughs> game. So you're well off the mark on that one. But, yeah, yeah no, as I say, I just want to drive off, off the wreck and just being completely shell shocked. What they was the so um, better than us. what was the spinner's name? Jeremy Newman, a guy who I That's remember it. with disdain, considering he beat me by. And out on the averages by two runs on the average. My average at the end of the season was 8.63. His was six point something. And he beat me to the av- um, bowling averages that year. And yeah, he took four for 14 in this in this game. And, and Jeremy Jeremy's still playing now in Division 6 for Thornton Force, I think it is. He's captain in that team. And he was just a class player. A good batsman, quality batsman. Uh, and and he was just a canny, very similar. I, th- I remember to Gareth for us. He didn't really spin it a lot, but was very accurate. And um, I might be wrong. I might be doing him a disservice when saying he didn't didn't spin it a lot. But I can just remember he was a very left left arm spinner, if I remember rightly. Yeah, he, um, he, he, and he, he always put it on the spot. He, he was the kind of bowler I thought. Some days it just doesn't happen for you for whatever reason. That's just the thing with team sports sometimes. It's just not your day. Everybody has an off day and you throw in a performance like that and there's no there's no rhyme or reason for it. Just there's, there's no explanation. Like, to yeah, just just crack on, just get just just, just get rid of it, um and, and just crack on. But I think we're we were all stunned, weren't we, to be honest. Mm. I mean there's no mm. two ways about it. I think like I said from like I said at the beginning, I think it. It was the kick up the arse, wasn't it? Because then that were two losses out of four, something like that. Well, at, at this stage, obviously in the season, in the season, we we've got all these, we've got these two, um, you know, big name marquee signings, and um, and we're we're doing all our warm ups before the the game. We've all got the same kit. Um, we're all netting three times a week, and and we we've, we've got beat twice already. You know, it's yeah. um, we, we, but, but I think we knew, I think we knew, despite that, that we were much better. Oh, than we've yeah. been in previous seasons and, and if you think that we've finished you know on an average between fourth and fifth um we knew that we had certainly had the players we, ju- we just haven't shown it yet in, in um you know um consistently yeah 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 absolutely and, and i think i think scott's right i think it was you know a, a, a kick up the backside for us to to not be complacent that we could just for the batters that they could just go out there and, and it yeah. happen and, and rack up big runs and for the bowlers that, you know, we couldn't just turn an arm over and, and get a wicket. So, as Alex said, as Dave says, it was one of those occasions where you just put it behind, you move on to the next week. And, and I've got to say, boy, did we move on to the next week. Uh, we, we, we couldn't have chosen our, our opponents any better. It was BAC Preston seconds who went on to finish stone bottom of the, the league that season. Um, and we won the toss and put BAC in and managed to bowl them all out for 84. Um, they did take 26 overs to get out 84, so it was a bit of a a bit of a drag, um, but it was a convincing, convincing performance. And um, um, we won the toss, didn't we? We we won the toss and put them in. And uh, yeah, I've got to say, at BAC, it's generally a decent wicket. Um, so I think potentially it might have been off the back of. I mean, you were quite close to Kezines. I don't know whether it was off the back of a. A poor batting performance the week before, thinking, well, let's get him in the field. You know, let's let's get in the field and let's concentrate on getting a good performance in the field and taking the pressure off the batsman a little bit. I don't know, but in yeah, I think, I think it was. I think you just 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 change it up and see see how it goes. And I, and I, and I think after that game, I think Kez was always thinking, um, get the opposition in. We're, we're probably better chasing as opposed to, to, to trying to go off and, and, and bat in a, a T20 style. Yeah. Um, it, it, you could get 300, but then it could go horribly wrong, as we saw with the films, and you know. Yeah. Well, certainly the bowlers stepped up that day. Jake Bolton opened up and got 4 for 38. Um, and a certain Neil Harvey got 4 for 11. Coming on first change that day, so it wouldn't have been the mop, guys. So I'm going to step up, stand up for myself a little bit there. Um, so yeah, so it was it was all round just a, a, a really convincing performance and a, a great way to bounce back. Um, I think that game, game was the first was the day Jake um, revealed his his orange Nike spikes. Actually, that's the one thing I remember. 
<laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah. Let's just say for somebody that didn't need to stand out and didn't need to show off anymore, uh, I think it was it was quite a bold choice. Yeah, for James yeah his, his clown shoes. They, they, uh, yeah, he's yeah. very bold for a giant yeah. retiring yeah. type. Yeah, very very shy retiring type. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it was. Uh, it, it was another. Uh, I think uh, again we'll stick with the phrase competitive for Jake for sure. Um, I think, as, as Alex said there, you know, chasing a total like that, you can do it one or two ways. You can be nice and conservative, but we certainly weren't ever conservative with where we went about things. And whilst Kez went early, uh, Einzi 40 not out and Ernie 38 not out, of which uh, 20 of those were five fours. Um, I, I can remember taking some photos of this game and, and there's one photo of Ernie just literally playing the biggest cow shot and I'm pretty sure <laughs> it went straight back over the bowler's head for four. It, it's just a, a massive swipe. And, um, but yeah, again, you know, 85 for one inside 16 overs. Um, they took 26 overs to get 84. We took 16 to knock it off. And it was just, I think you and, you and Ernie, Alex, must have took advantage of that, what, what was probably still a very good deck at that point. Yeah, well, he, he, he was a great guy to, to bat with, was Ernie. And, and um, I, I was lucky in, in the partners in, in the top order, um, Ernie and, and, and Kez, they were always quick between the wickets. So you always felt that um, no matter what was going to happen, if you got bogged down, there was always a sing single there. But obviously with, with Ernie, he was always looking to attack, always looking to score boundaries. So it was great. He, you could just get him on strike and, and just watch him... Um, you know, try try and attack, and and obviously the, the score we're, we're chasing. You know, as an opener, um, if 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 you're there at the end, you, you win the game. You just gotta you just gotta knock it out. You know, it's it's easy. It's a lot all. It's a good chance to get not out. Um, so to so just see it through, and, and I just remember that day, just just thinking, just 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 see it through. Look for the not out. Really, be there at the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all know any by the end of that season got the nickname Seaball Hitball. And uh, yeah, it, it was just another example of, of his ability to do that. So yeah, a real good way to bounce back after a disappointing, uh, disappointing result against Thornton Cleveland is to to really put BAC to the sword. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a, it was a good performance. I'm I'm just going to check whether uh, whether there was uh, anything else of note. No, nothing particular. So and a, a, another another early start of the U tree as well. You know they they made a lot of money out of us that year. But that's that sort of it, it became a regular back. occurrence, wasn't it? I mean, in the pub early, that's for certain. I'm, I'm going to say it probably suited us to be quite honest. We'll be at them prices. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I'm sure you could be an honorary Yorkshireman. I swear. So that was a convincing victory, uh, Dave. At this point, you were in the seconds. Was there? any talk in the seconds of, of how well the first were doing the the structure of the team uh, you know winning a victory winning a game that easily um, <laughs> and obviously being in the pub early um how, were the seconds really noticing what potential there might be there for the first team at that point i think if i remember rightly i think it, it felt like very much you know it it was sort of the performances were at the the extremes of, of, of things. You know, when when things went well, they went very well, and you know, you know, convincing victories. But then, if we as we've seen, when everything didn't go to plan, it was an absolute disaster. And um, I think by this point, you know, sort of heading towards a third of the way through the season, I don't think there was any sort of thought that you know these guys are going to you know romp to the league or anything. I think it was more just. Well, you know, there's the signs of possibly a good season, but, you know, these perhaps need to string a few victories together, you know, get that confidence, things like that. But I, I don't think at this stage there was anything to say that it was going to be, you know, sort of one with silverware at the end of it. We we moved on after that BAC game to one of the standout games for a number of different reasons of the season. We travelled... Right up the M6 to Torrey's home at Lancaster. Um, always an interesting journey, particularly if it's a bank holiday or anything like that. I don't think this was, but... Um, and it was a baking hot day, but I do remember it was a particularly windy day. Um, am I right in remembering, you two, that they had to tie the side screens down 
just to hold them in place because they were about to blow, blow over. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I remember that, and then, and then and then they were saying that maybe we play without sight screens, and then oh, yeah. someone someone was saying, "Well, you can't do that. It's not you yeah. know, the league rules say you have to have a sight screen." Yeah, bit of drama, ground, bit of drama the, before the game. The groundsman wasn't wasn't overly happy about things. I don't think well, if I remember rightly. He won the toss, didn't we, that day? And he won no. it. Real, no, you're wrong real. again, Scott. You're not doing really well with this, are you? They won the toss. And you're just guessing. You're just guessing. <laughs> yeah, that's what... It's off the cuff, this, isn't it? Is it off the cuff? It's off the cuff. We're off the cuff. But I'm not here. We're not here. We won the toss and feel it worse. No, they won the toss and the elected to bat, Scott. So, so yeah. Uh, I was going to get that. You're not really seeing me. Memories failing you badly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear! See, we knew this. We knew this would go well. So obviously, Scott, you, your memory ain't great of that. So no, they won the toss. Now, the one thing I don't remember was what our memory was of them as a team. I don't know if we ex knew what to expect from them as a team. I think the only player we knew of was the veteran Graham Clark, who had always got runs. I think in the in the Northern League first of all, and then had come down into the into the Palace Shield and had then moved down again from their first team into their second team. Um, so we knew he was a quality player, but we didn't know how. Um, but they racked up a, a pretty huge score of 191 for seven. Um, opener Sean McGuigan got 62. I've got to say, I don't remember an awful lot of that other than it was off 110 balls. So it would have been a, a steady innings to say the least. Um, but... Halfway through that, Clarkey came in, and, and Hines, we've had discussions about this. Um, it was a brutal, brutal innings. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'd seen him before, uh, Clark, when I played at Horton against Torrey's home, and, and he scored 100 that day. I knew how destructive he could be. But as you mentioned, Torrey's home were quite defensive at the start, and, and JT bowled really well um, and, and, and tied one end up. Um, and at one stage, it just looked like they were just happy with, you know, 110, 120. Um, and then he came in and, and, and he, I think he hit six sixes in the innings. I mean, some absolutely monstrous hits. I've never seen anything like it out the ground um, towards the trees. It's not a small top. ground either, is it? Let's be honest. It's a big, big ground. He was clearing the trees. It was phenomenal hitting. it's a big strike rate put it that way wasn't it? and he just completely took the game away from us from us being on top and, and being quite smug about it you know thinking we're chasing quite a small score he just completely changed the momentum of the, of the game and um and it was a fantastic knock um and and really um, it, it, i'd say slightly at the halfway stage you probably put them ahead slightly um mm -hmm. because yeah, it, it's a big ask, really, to chase that kind of score um, in, a, in, a, in a second inning. So it was a fantastic knock. I think the the, the one thing I do remember is, is sitting down at, at um, for lunch, and, uh, and and he was on the phone. I think he was to the to the first team, and um, he was he was he was walking around being quite loud, saying how Torrey's own seconds had amassed 190 against what we dealt, and. Um, I just remember speaking to, I think it was Sammy B and Kez at the time, and just thinking, we've got, we've got, we can't let these win after that. You know, I mean, not not after the way they took the game away from us, and and, and obviously went in, and what followed was was equally as equally as destructive. You know, we went out trying to knock it off as quickly and comprehensively as possible. I think I, I started off with a four, and they opened with a spinner, if I remember rightly, and I think the first ball went for four. Um, and and we just we just attack, attack the score as best as possible. Well, Clark Clark ended up on fifty five off just twenty eight balls, and as Scott said, incredible strike rate. And Kurt took some fearful stick. I came back from a, for a second spell, and he I think Kurt took some yeah you know, just it's, it's, it's good life. job he didn't good job he didn't come in earlier. That's all yeah, I remember thinking. Absolutely. This guy sometimes you see a batsman and you just you just think we can't get this guy out. Um, thank God the innings ended, and yeah. he didn't back for longer, you know. So was he not? Out? Was it say again, Scott? Was he not out? Uh, he was not out. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah. and um, but yeah, as, as Alex said, uh, it was it was an absolute 
pleasure as a, as I was down at number ten that day to actually watch that chase. And it's it's something. It's one of those games. Whilst a lot of these games stand out in the memory, it was one of those games that is talked about by this group of players whenever we talk to each other, um, all the time. And the one thing that stood out that day is that everybody had the same mindset. And if somebody got out, the next batsman came in and just carried it on from where the, the net last batsman had left off. And Kez, Kez and you opened up, Hines. Kez, 21 off 27, which on that day was actually a slow strike rate uh, of 77. Um, yourself, 56 off 37 balls. Six fours, three sixes, striking at 151. Any 25 off 33. Again, conservative for, for Mr. Seaball Hitball. Um, just the three boundaries. Curtis, 34 off 27. Six boundaries, striking at 125. Mac came in, and I can remember Mac just accelerated from ball one. 33 off 27. Four fours, one six, hitting at 122. And then even Gareth came in at the end. Again, I can't remember who he came in for. But 20 off 24, three boundaries. And, and, and we knocked 192 off in 31 overs. And it was just an incredible, incredible day. I can remember we uh, we had a couple of spectators that day. Young Mr Cuffin and, and Abby and his missus who were on the dark fruits and, and they were absolutely loving it as we were up sat on the uh, on the veranda watching and and it was just it was just an incredible day and it was it's one that long stands in the memory and uh, it was probably a key point in that in that season giving us the belief that no matter what the situation we always had the tools to overcome it I think it was nice to see you know, mac score runs again g obviously who's the stalwart of the club for years you know won't be there he came in and scored runs and, and that's when we realized that we had a long really long uh, batting order you know and we really felt confident that we could chase anything down after that day yeah obviously seeing when you know Matt's come through juniors and then you see him hit run for the first team like that it does give you a it does give you a better a more sense of pride on it than oh yeah absolutely I mean, that, you know, sort of thing you know I mean? it is and, and as i say i think you touched on it earlier scott we always knew mac had the talent we always knew he had the the build the frame he, you know, he, he can yeah. ball fast he can hit the ball a long way it was that consistency and i think we were starting to see that this season and it, as i said we said it earlier it was a breakthrough season for him and uh, and yeah it was it was fantastic and and we went back down the m6 all heads held high and, and, and chest puffed out and there is one other thing we need to check uh, or, or comment on from this game and it's something that yeah you know, i don't want to want to say it cast a shadow over the game but we, we had a we had a fresh scorer for this game and mr peter ingham and um and, and and pete pete likes a pine we all know pete likes a pine but that day when he was scoring i think was set up for pete he was sat in that little hut and uh and don my lad was only nine at the time and i can distinctly remember pete getting don to shuttle run pints of fosters from the bar into this little scoring hut and uh i think mr hines said it the other night i, I don't know if the validity of those scoring rates is accurate or not considering <laughs> I, I, I don't think you can trust those, that, that scorecard that day i mean um, you mentioned about Clark, you never seen hitting like it. I've never seen drinking like it. That day. Like, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. The guy's an animal, fair play to him, but I certainly I'm don't like believe it. him. I'm like it next that game. Because I swear, for some reason, I swear to my birthday. It may, it may well have been. Yeah, the day, the day, the day, the day yeah, June. 6th of June. Yeah, well, 3rd of June was birthday, weren't it? And that so was Saturday, so obviously. You, you may yeah. well have been celebrating after that. So yeah, I, celebrating I think Pete was celebrating for you. I think that's what he was doing. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah it was it was a classic Pete performance that day. But no, what, what a day. What, what a day and really one of the standout moments of the season, really. Um, so after that delight, we then uh, moved on to a home game against Fylde. And um, something I touched on with Fylde... Um, we, we always felt they had a decent side but they ended up third from bottom that season and it, it seemed strange because we always had decent games against them and uh, again the scores proved here it was a really quite a close game um we won the toss 
and stuck them in. As as Ainsley said, it was it was something that was always in Kez's mind. Maybe we're better chasing. Um, Fire batted first and got 180 for eight off their 45. Um, mainly down to consistent batting. Top four all got. 30 or more-ish, Rich Gallagher with 28 was the lowest out of those four, Eddie Bailey with 51 opening up was the highlight for Fylde, and uh, a very similar sort of mould to Waltley Dale and in his top, top four all getting runs and then everybody else not really contributing, so so it was um, it was a very defendable total from their point, 180 for eight on any day, but certainly down the wreck is a decent total, and um, I think Fylde was one of those teams that we, we did come to respect quite a lot, you two. They were, they were, they were similar to Freckleton, really, where the previous years they'd had the wool on us. They'd done us twice. I remember Gally, like you said, I think Andy made a great point the other day. He, he smoked uh, quite a few runs against us. And I think, who is this guy? And then we went on Palace Shield cricket, <laughs> averaging seven and a half. <laughs> so, um, but, can, the, the point before I know that I made was that after the Torres home game, I think then we had the mentality that nobody will beat us now. Yeah. If, if, if to, to to be quite honest, and I, I think that stood us in good stead going through the season further, sort of thing. I think the most satisfying thing about that day, I mean, I, I still, to be honest, I, I wasn't, I didn't play that game. I'm not quite sure where I was. It must have been an Audi, or for some reason I was away. And I just remember seeing the um, the result and just being so proud, you know, and seeing that, like, like yourself, Scott, uh, Paul Williams, Matt Morris, um, yourself and Matt being younger than me and just seeing the lads come through um, while the lads who hogged the, the, the scores and a bit of the limelight uh, at the start of the season. We, we've been away and we'd still been fouled who we battled with for a number of seasons in that league. Um, just just be feeling really proud, really, of, of the lads who come in and scored the runs and, and won us the game. And really, if we hadn't won that game, um, Neil, you might, if you've got to play cricket, you might be able to just work it out. But if we did get beaten that game, while well, there was quite a few people missing, we've lost three games there. And what are we in, game nine? Well, mm. that, that, that's not that's not championship form, you know. That's that's <laughs> we're looking we're looking at finishing fifth again, like we had done for the last few years. So yeah. it was a really important game, that important point of the season, you know. Again, touching on what Scott touched on about Mac coming through. Mac was the main bowler and contributed that day, bowling wise, three for thirteen, um, and and that that was you know the pick of the bowlers. So it was a it was a fairly consistent innings from files. So fair play to them. Um, but we managed to knock it off 181 for six in 35 overs. And again, you know, even with Ainsley missing, it was a, a very convincing performance. And Mac stepping up to the plate again as a youngster as he was then. Uh, 56 for Mac. And then um, a really important partnership further down with Paul Williams coming in from the second team, 35 not out. And a certain Scott Newton, 25 not out. So that would have been a, a really key, key partnership. And uh, a day of you, I mean, we, we we both play with Paul quite a lot and, and Paul's a really useful all-round cricketer and and we know Paul has it in him to have play in innings like that, don't we? Yeah, he's another one like um, Ben Petrez who can certainly do a job in the first. He's, you know, another solid opening batsman, you know, knows his shots, knows his areas where he scores. Um, in the field, um, you know, he, he very, very rarely drops a catch. And also, he's uh, mean with collecting the twelve pounds in, you know, keep it tight at leash on the match day sub. So he's a great guy to have around. Um, I think he's, um, yeah, he, you know, he, he certainly in the seconds, he's regular, you know, scores of thirties, fifties, and, and onwards. So it's great to see that, you know, when he has played the games in the first team, he's done likewise. Looking looking back on it now, it, it was probably a big two weeks for us in that season because. The Torres on the game before, like we explained before, with a turnaround. But then, obviously, when you move on to the week after, and with no Einzi and such and such, you want to see what the team's actually made of. And um, obviously, we've, we've come through that, and the season carried on, sort of thing. I've just paid attention to not just yourself missing Einz, but I think I've worked this one out. I think this was the weekend you and Kez and the girls went down to Cornwall. 
Didn't you go down to the caravan? Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's probably right. If we were all missing together, then that's yeah. probably the week, week, weekend we did that. Yeah. And, and you were on Rambler think, all weekend, I believe. Yeah, we, we do. Yeah. I, I, I knocked up, well, also, I knocked up some, um, some homebrew and took it down. And, um, and and you might get some feedback from Sammy B and Kez actually next, next week on that. But let's say they just they had to add uh, black currant to it to make it drinkable at the time. <laughs> well, you've got it. If you're having to break away from the game, mate, you've got to make it worthwhile, aren't you? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. So yeah, it was. Um, you getting back to it, as I say, to 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 get a result, knocking off 180 inside the well, just outside 35 overs, and again. A key partnership with with two middle to lower order batsmen seeing as home again shows that we can do it in a slightly different way and um, show the versatility of the team so yeah real big result as scott said off the back of that uh, that tory zone result so we then moved on to norcross away um norcross renowned for being the coldest ground in the world even on a baking hot summer's day the wind still 35 mile an hour gusts across there um three layers minimum. three layers minimum and um but it was an absolute again convinced convincing victory we've gone from a couple of toughies to an absolute mauling um yeah. norcross won the toss and decided to stick us in i think it might be one of those nasa hussein moments where i think it was instantly regretted yeah. we um Stunningly, we were 236 all out in 36 overs, which is incredible, really, when you look at it. Um, this, 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 this week, the screw really started to turn for us. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, Norcross, unfortunately for them on that day, just got an absolute backlash. Hines and Kez were back, um, as was Sammy B. And although Kez only got seven opening up, Hines, you got another 100 under your belt, 107. Um, and, and, and generally speaking, Norcross decks, whilst never the, the bounciest in the world, are generally pretty true. And, and clearly on this day, I think Norcross had made the wrong decision sticking us in. Yeah, the, the, the wicket at Norcross, it was always quite true, I thought. But it, it's funny, I don't remember a lot about the innings. I remember more about the the the, the duck against Stones and Cleveleys and, and, and the innings where I didn't necessarily agree with the LBW decision at Torrey Zone than the the, the ton. I don't know what that says about my personality or how I think, but um, it just yeah, we, I just remember batting with Kurt a little bit. We were we were going really well again, as I mentioned at the start. It looked like a big score was on, and then we just we just gave up gave our wicket away. What I would say at this stage is obviously at, at, at um, been, been netting at that stage we were netting a lot and um, we really knew that we, we were had a good chance of, of competing for the league so every run mattered um and and it's just in the, the form of my life at that stage so uh, yeah just just trying to every ball was trying i was trying to hit you know I, I, I was looking for runs all the time it was just the mindset of constantly looking to score not not survive you know i think uh, the thing that sticks out for me again i was batting down at nine that day um, the big thing I do remember, which at the time created a, a lot of amusement in us watching, was Curtis had got 56 and had, had got there in, in next to no time and got out bowled by Lewis Parry. And Curtis has a, I don't want to say this it makes it sound like he's got an ego, he's got a very high opinion of his own ability in terms of so he's confident. Sure. He's confident. He's confident. He's a very confident guy. And, yeah. and, and most of us who got 56 would have been absolutely delighted with that. Curtis, yeah. I can remember coming off, swinging his bat around, effing and blinding, absolutely pissed the, off the, to the, the max. The, the, the thing about that season, I, I don't know how it was with the bowlers, Neil, but with the batsmen, I mean, bearing in mind that I, I played for Dale now for four years in a row and, and had always opened the batting. All of a sudden, they've got Kurt and Amy coming from a, a better standard. So there was a bit of healthy competition. Yeah. So Kurt, Kurt's, Kurt's frustrated that day because I've got a ton and he's not not tunned up. And and it was brilliant and we, it was all in good faith. We all had a laugh about it, but we didn't want each other to fail. But we wanted to do better than, than the, the other person. You know, that yeah. was completely natural and, and healthy. And uh, and he was probably frustrated that I'd, I'd got a ton that, that, um, 
that week and, and he hadn't but he, he, he i guess I, I can't remember how he got out but i just remember him looking really good and and, and uh, yeah he'd probably be still thinking about that day i remember as well um when you said about the wicket being true was when we went out to field and what was his name the opening lad who smoked like 94 in about 50 balls and said he had to get off quick the rick bobbington <laughs> yeah yeah the season before yeah <laughs> Obviously, we was amassing 236. We still knew that this lad had to come out and bat. And yeah. Was obviously, the year before. And I remember Jake coming down a bit of a dip. And um, I, I thought, are we stood too far back here? And next thing you know, he nicked off. And I took it above my head. And I looked at Kez. Kez were at first slip. And I took it like this. And Kez were like this. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, you're right. You, you're exactly right. I we think got, we've got him early, and then the rest, the rest is history. We, so. we, we probably focused a bit too much on the batting, yeah. the, the bowling that season, and, and and Jake again. I don't remember him playing too much the, the few seasons before that. So he was, he was a new signing that year, yeah. and um, the thing about Jake is he didn't move it much. But his, his last ball was as quick as his first ball. And, yeah. and that day, I do remember being stood at slip and thinking yeah, he was bowling with, with some serious pace that day. And um, I don't I, he must have took a few wickets that day because I think he bowled a long spell. Not five. Um, he got five. Well, yeah, he got a, he got a five. And, um, he, he, was, he was brilliant that day. He was really fast. And the thing about Jake was that, as we've already mentioned, the pitch at Norcross didn't generally do a lot. So for Jake to generate that pace, and as Scott says, to take it in that manner, showed just what an effort Jake was putting in. And and yeah, 5 for 21 off 11 overs was a remarkable return. And and Jake really, as you said, Einzi, he never, the comp competitor in him would never allow him to drop his pace. Never oh, allow he, him to drop his pace. He, he, he hated the batsman. He, he hated the batsman. He was always at them. Um, Every ball was the same pace. Um, as I said, he didn't do a lot with it, but he just it was just the will to get the batsman out every single ball. Um, he, he, was, he had a great season that year, and he was he was a big loss when we, we didn't have him the year after. I think, as you said, in terms of the batsmen pushing each other on, I do remember between me, Kurt, and, and Jake as the as the let's say the major scene bowlers, and, and JT for that matter. It was. I mean, we we know we have a cut off for for thirty wickets for for the averages. And it was almost like a race to who can get to 30 wickets first, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, it was, as you, you use the phrase, healthy competition. I think that was a key component component in both batting and, and bowling that year. So. I mean, there, there, there's three bowlers there, uh, Jake, JT and Kurt. I wouldn't fancy telling them that they're coming off. Yeah. You know, they all, always wanted to, to bowl at all times, you know. They'd let you know if they disagree. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, yeah, that was... Um, I, that, that was a that was an utter mauling and, and, and just a, a really great result. Um, we then move on to our final game of this first part, which was a home game against Fulwood and Broughton. And, and as we all know, Fulwood and Broughton are an exceptionally well-run club. This was against F&B thirds. And, and the thing with people like F&B is you never truly know who's going to play in what team. Sometimes they can turn a third team out, which is... Right strong one week week the next and 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 this week was you know a decent team they had out to be fair and it um they they won the toss and decided to bat first and put 158 all out in 44.1 overs and as we've mentioned previously anything over 150 at the wreck is a reasonable total and i think you know against a bowling lineup such as ours i think most teams would see that as a you know a, a reasonable performance uh, and they had some really good players Christopher Ward, their keeper, uh, racked up 51, seven fours and a six that day. Um, but they also had um, contributions in the middle order and 23 from Safraz Hadji at the top. So it was a reasonable performance by them. Um, bowling wise, um, pick of the bowlers, well, I got three for 31, two for Mac, two for JT. So it was evenly spread. And I think, generally speaking, we'd probably thought, you know, part of the course, okay, we've done okay, but after the previous week of demolishing Norcross, it's not down to earth as such, but okay, guys, you know, we've really got some business to do here. Yeah, I think the um, <clears throat> the two results previous had fueled the Norcross, Norcross result. 
So um, moving into this one, like you say, the good setup. You don't know. You don't know what you're going to get with F and B. Obviously, strong setup. Whether it's going to be like say a strong side or a weak side, and I, I think they, they were a strong side, but obviously your man in the corner there with three figures again. It's uh, what's up? Yeah, with we, we, we were just. I think we were just too good for them. Um, that, that day, I mean, F and B, we'd they'd always been in our league. I think we'd, we'd played against them for a number of years, and again, a bit like um, Whittingham and Goosner, um, you know, it was kind of 50 50, but like filed as well. We'd, we'd beaten them, they'd beaten us, but that year, uh, with the new signings, we were just too strong for them. And um, again, like I said before, I don't remember a lot about the innings. Um, it, it, at this stage, the, the one, the only thing I do remember is I'm starting to cut. I mean, I'm in form, and um, I, I wasn't the best cutter of a, of a cricket ball. And um, all of a sudden, I started pulling out cut shots, and yeah, just just hours of of, um, of practice, obviously, in the, the bowling machine that year, and um, and just re a real will to score runs because I knew it mattered because um, we were heading for promotion, and um, and just and just 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 form really, and and, um, and I'm sure. If you spoke to to Kurt and Amy, um I'm sure I got dropped once or twice in, in that innings as well. So um, I, I don't think I'd ever been dropped as much in, in my life as that, that season in 2015. So yeah, just 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 nice, just just a nice time really, just 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 cashing in on on the um, on form. Well, Apart again from the uh, Alex Hines show, what I noticed from that game was uh, in the bowling what looked really pleasing was the fact there were six wicket takers you know everybody was chipping in yeah. making a contribution and, um, got... and then you know exiting stage left for uh, the man of the moment to score yet another ton yeah think... it, it... go on i'm sorry yeah uh, just the the bowling was was so strong wasn't it with with yourself neil and jt and, and, and jake and kurt and gareth playing every other week we just seem to have every option from spin to pace to, to, to swing and, and, and Neil, you um, used to mop up the tail. So we, we just always had an answer and, and, and that day was no different. And Mac, I, I forgot to mention Mac. But by the way, we, we, we keep we keep mentioning Mac. We, we've, um, Mac. Mac ended up being a Northern League player, didn't he? So, I mean, he's only yeah. a young, young lad here in this in this league, but he, he seems to be quick on his, on his day and, um, and, and just, just a complete bowling lineup, really. But, on, but if you're in a team having those five or six bowlers coming at you, it's just it's just relentless. You know, there's no rest up from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Back, back, back in that season, you always knew. I mean, obviously, I opened the batting all year, and you always knew that there was usually a, a good younger um, opening mm. bowler, or maybe a, a, a good kind of um, player, maybe in his forties, fifties, who played at a good standard, who didn't give you much. But you always thought first change the minute you got first change on if you were still there that you could really start to attack generally the quality wasn't great in division three on first change and with, with us that season it was equally as good um yeah. there, there was no respite for the opposition with the, with the quality of the ball and attack there well the the thing that stands out to me even from that bowling is that yet again a james ain't score wicket and even a kez wicket as well so as you said, Dave says definitely spreading the ball well, around that, that, that that's, that's not really back to my point, has it? I've just mentioned all these quality ballers and somehow <laughs> Kezan <laughs> Kez Ania got a chuck. I, I have no idea what, what happened there. I mean, no Skipper's idea. prerogative. Exactly. exactly yeah. <laughs> but going back to the batting, uh, 111, it was your top scorer of the season, Al. Um, 18 fours, two sixes. And, and Kez, 39. Uh, including four fours, and so it was a, an outstanding opening partnership from that point of view. But then Amy only got seven not out, so you must have been farming the strike, Al. That's all I can be saying. That it, you know, out of 162, you know, Kes 39 and Amy seven, you, you've well, certainly well, found it well, on there. Like, like I said, I think it's healthy competition at this stage. I'm thinking, I'm not. There's no way Amy's getting more runs than me this year. So <laughs> that, that's that's one way to do it. Just don't let him get the strike. Get to ball five, quick single. There we go. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah, absolutely. The one, the one thing that I will point out. Um, somebody, I, I know we said when we when we planned to do this review, we we try and pick out key people. We've discussed Frank Holden. Somebody who I remember always used to hold a little bit over us was Pete Riley, spinner for F and B. 
and always seemed to get a lot of wickets against us and, and bless him that day he went for 29 off four overs going at seven and over and all I can say is Hines he must have just tucked into Pete that day and uh, and just must have took a liking to him because as I said Pete had always got a lot of wickets against us with his spin previously and uh, obviously it didn't happen for him that day anyway and they must have whipped him off fairly sharpish so uh, yeah really convincing performance and a, and a great way to end that first half of the season um so yeah so that that wraps up yeah we're, we're, can, I, can, I, can i just chop something in before we wrap it up i've just Go got on, a message sure. i just got a message off mark and he's just whatsapp me saying tell the club they owe me a tenner for fuel for the roller <laughs> that, that about sums up and you know what I, I couldn't think of a better way to end the first half of this 2015 season than the Mac bringing that up, and he's not even a member of the club anymore. That that that, that pretty much sums things up. But you know what a first half of the season it was a roller coaster ride, and and what was to come was even more so. And and next time we'll uh, we'll have a couple of other special guests on, um, and we'll talk about the second half of the season. And obviously, we, for you two guys, unfortunately, you won't be there for the, the winning moment. But um, we'll hopefully get well, everybody on. Listen, and, uh, we'll, have award, we'll, have, we'll have the award winners on tonight. Vice and the captain next week, right? That's it. That's it. Yeah, we, we'll get the yeah. most important guys on this week, the award winners. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, thanks very much for coming on, you two. Really appreciate it. Um, it's been great to reminisce. And as I say, next next time we'll have we'll have the second half of the season and we'll, we'll look at plenty more games we had a lot riding on them and a lot of uh, a lot of action in them so uh, yeah anything you two want to want to wrap I, up I, with I, other I, than that i think i think for, for me just to summarize i mean we mentioned obviously that the whole point of the podcast is looking at the scores and the games themselves but i think even if we hadn't been winning games that year the, the characters that we had in the dressing room you know we mentioned the new signs of um of, of kurt and amy um mac kurt's brother jt sammy b kez um, all the lads, you know, Scott and, and his brother Sam, all big, big personalities and, and, a, and a real laugh. And um, we just had a really good time, both on, on and off the pitch. Yeah. And um, it just, just thanks for having me tonight, really, because it was a nice time, 2015. And uh, I look forward to, to listening to, to Kez and Sammy B next week. Yeah, same, same again, just mirroring what Alex said. It's been, uh, it's been good reminiscing on it, bringing back a few memories that. I didn't even know in my head, to be honest. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, I've, I'll get us company in the next 11 games, because obviously I didn't get one at first 11. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure. No, thank you. Thank no worries. You. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Thanks again for joining us and having, adding your input. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Just to, just to finish, I mean, obviously, it's great. Um, and we've spoke about all these great games and we've spoke about some of the individual performances. Like, obviously... We spoke a lot about Mr. Hines and, you know, he must be very proud of his achievements that year and breaking the league record, which I'm sure is too modest to talk about. Um, but he's right in what he says about, you know, it was a real team effort. And, you know, all these lads, as, as, as we've heard tonight, you know, they, they all practised together real hard. They played real hard on the field. They all went back to the pub afterwards and drunk together. There were, you know, there was a really good, ethos and, and camaraderie in that first team that year and you know it still is the case today when you see them you know like tonight talking and you know going over old stories and things like that you know this, it, it's still there now and it's just testament to how good the season he was yeah absolutely couldn't agree more so thanks again guys and thanks everybody for watching uh, this has been part one of the 2015 champions season review uh, we'll have part two coming for you next time. But once again, thanks for watching. This has been the Up The Dale podcast. <laughs>